So the first question that has been decided, the question is British imperial ideology for India was the result of such intellectual and political cross currents at home. At home means Britain, British society, clear? So imperial ideology for India was the result of such intellectual and political cross currents at home. That is in Britain. Now, what would be the content? Modern India contents you must be knowing. There's no doubt, clear? And why this question has been framed? This question is from my side only. All the questions are not mine. But just to understand the whole concept of British rule, you'll understand in this question only the gist of all policies adopted by British, economic, administrative, and even social religious. So what were the major ideologies in Britain that shaped policies in India? Intellectual and political cross-currents. Britain has maintained its colonial empire with clear-cut ideology. No confusion at all. What were those ideologies or intellectual cross-currents? So first major thing to be understood is Orientalism. Clear? So first major cross-current is Orientalism. What do you mean by Orientalism? Indological studies, they wanted to know, first of all, about Indian culture, just to look for the fault lines, so that on those fault lines, they can bank upon, clear? So Indological studies, Oriental approach, Oriental means approach to know about Eastern culture, Oriental culture, clear? Because culturally, the whole world is divided into two parts, Oriental world and Occidental world. Eastern part of the world is known as Oriental world, where culture is largely based on religious considerations, clear? So they wanted to know about Indian culture. They wanted to know about Oriental culture. And the greatest example of this initiative is they established an institution for Indological studies, which is known as Asiatic Society of Bengal, 1784, clear? They, they translated large number of religious legs like Bhagavad Gita into English. Charles Wilkins translated that to know about Indian culture. Clear? They established institutions suited to Indian requirements initially. That is Calcutta Madarsa in 1781, Sanskrit College at Banaras in 1791. They went on establishing such institution. All this indicate Oriental approach, clear? With this Oriental approach, when they came to know about Indian culture and their fault lines, the limitations, then they decided to go with another approach of converting the people of India into Christianity so that they may be a long-term supporter of British rule in India. This concept or this cross-current, logical cross-current, this philosophy is known as Evangelicalism, clear? And evangelicalism largely reflected by the approach of Christian missionaries. Large number of Christian missionaries came to India. These Christian missionaries provided all major facilities like free medical services, like free education facilities, especially to the lower caste people, tribal people. And under the influence of Christian missionaries, it cannot be denied. Large number of people began to accept Christianity, clear? And this was because of evangelicalist philosophy. Once British rule had been established, now British colonial rule had to be justified. They needed to make it clear that they are there in India for the betterment of Indians. And just to make it clear that India is nothing but a white man's burden, burden on them only. They are on a civilizing mission to develop India. They even went on to claim that India is not a land of snake charmers, nothing more than that. And they are in on civilizing mission. And India is almost a kind of Burden on the white people, white men's burden. And this philosophy or this approach was indicated by another philosophy. And this philosophy is known as utilitarianism. That is greatest good of greatest number of people. Clear? Jeremy Bentham, James Mill began to advocate. Clear? And as a mark of utilitarianism, what they did was, the biggest thing they did was they started to construct and develop railways in India. They began to promote universities in India. They established high courts in India. All these were done basically to show they are on a civilizing mission to develop India. But ultimate objective was to further consolidate the colonial rule over India. Clear? So they are major philosophies. The British imperial ideology for India was the result of such intellectual and political cross currents at home. These were developing in the European world only. And they got implemented in India in different phases. So one is Orientalism, then followed by Evangelicalism, and then followed by Orientalism. You have to explain with examples. Orientalism, the biggest example is 
Asiatic society of Bengal. Clear? Even in Orientalism, you can give them to land revenue settlement. Permanent settlement is a reflection of Oriental law. Clear? One third of the revenue was to be collected as revenue. Even though they had discriminatory approach. Evangelicalism, role of Christian missionaries. And utilitarianism, the biggest example being growth and development of railways. You can even give examples of establishment of three central universities. Calcutta, Bombay, and Madras, 1857. Establishment of three high courts at Calcutta, Bombay, and Madras, 1862. Clear? All these are utilitarian philosophy and the justified colonial rule. Is that clear? If you understand these ideologies, all developments will easily come. Why they adopted such reactionary measures? First of all, guided by Orientalism, then Evangelicalism, and then Utilitarianism. What could be the possible introduction to this question? British imperial ideology in India witness changes over a period of time suited to colonial interest. Simple. British imperial ideology in India witness changes over a period of time suited to colonial interest because it was first Orientalism to suit colonial interest, then Evangelicalism, and then Utilitarianism. So it was basically different approaches suited to colonial interest. This can be introduction. What could be the conclusion? That the different political ideologies adopted by British in India primarily justified their colonial presence through white men's burden. They wanted to justify colonial presence, justified colonial presence through white men's burden. Systematic degradation of Indian society, clear. Systematic subjugation of India to accept colonial rule. Yeah, this can be conclusion. Imperial ideologies change over a period of time to show Indian subjugation permanently in the colonial rule. That can be one point. It's a right. Theme is right. Systematic degradation of Indian society. So in conclusion can also be that these differing, these different ideologies led to loss of confidence among masses for colonial subjugation. Why we are emphasizing this? There's a very important line, in fact. The, the, the importance is again a little why. Because when the first mass movement was started in national movement, Swadeshi movement, what was the philosophy of that movement? What was the philosophy? This conclusion will have each indication for examiner. What was the philosophy of Swadeshi movement? Atma Shakti, self-reliance. Why? People should develop this confidence to stand up against imperial ideology. Because by this time, their confidence had been washed away. Clear? That is why this line is important. Clear? The different ideologies led to complete mental subjugation of Indians to justify colonial rule. If you write this thing, examiner will know. You know the logic of launching Swadeshi movement with philosophy of Atma Shakti. That is why they use the term Swadeshi. That is indigenous. And at the same time, philosophy of boycott of British made good. So that you should be self-reliant to meet all your requirements. Unless you have this confidence, how can you fight the external force? It's clear. National movement is pure philosophical in nature. Examples, you have to explain this example. It's clear. Orientalism. For your knowledge, I'll let you know. Clear. The term Orientalism was first coined in the year 1979. This was coined by a Palestinian scholar. Clear. This Palestinian scholar is Edward Said. Clear. He coined the word Orientalism to indicate custom of Eastern world. In fact, the book itself is titled as Orientalism, published in 1979 by a Palestinian scholar, Edward Said. And that was followed largely by British during the initial phase. You can give many examples, clear? But don't give, like, give only one or two Asiatic society, Sanskrit college, or at Banaras, Calcutta, Madarsa. Give one or two examples, even land revenue settlement. Since was marked by orientalism, land revenue settlement or permanent settlement was supported even by Raja Ram Mohan Roy. Raja Ram Mohan Roy supported permanent settlement. And we all know permanent settlement was not beneficial for British. Permanent settlement was marked by economic defects. That is why permanent settlement was counted by political advantages because the real beneficial of permanent settlement were 
zamindars, not the British. Permanent settlement benefited the zamindars, not the British. Clear? And British, after realizing the mistakes of permanent settlement, they came out with another settlement known as Rayotwari settlement in Bombay and Madras. Because major part of revenue in permanent settlement went to zamindars. Clear? And that is why this settlement is also known as Samindari settlement, it became synonymous, clear? So, guided by Orientalism, Evangelicalism, Utilitarianism, clear? In fact, by this time when Orientalism began to develop and permanent settlement began to be realized it was economic defect, all the revenue settlements were based on an important concept. This concept, concept of collecting land revenue is known as Ricardo's theory of rent. What is Ricardo's theory of rent? In modern day, you have to write very specialized answers. You cannot write general answers because general answers are known to everyone. How will you distinguish your answer with others? What is Ricardo's theory of rent? What is Ricardo's theory of rent? How it was applied by British in India. This is also one of the cross current only. It developed in Britain. Clear. In utilitarianism, even you can write one another concept. That when they established judicial system in India, they applied two important bedrock principles known as rule of law and equality before law, which is followed till now. And rule of law and equality before law both were given by British jurists, Avi Dicey. Modern India seems to be easy. It's not easy, I'm telling you. Clear? It's not about NCRTs and all. Until least you write some specified answers, marks are not given. Clear? This is the difference is all the rulers in ancient and medieval India who collected land revenue, all of them collected land revenue, clear? But those in rulers of ancient medieval India, they collected revenue as shared in the produce of, shared in the produce of agricultural land, clear? That is, if there was 100 tons of food grains produced, one third was to be collected at state share. So it was shared in the produce of the land. It was not shared in the land itself, clear? And when British came to India, they made it clear, they are not collecting share of produce. They are the owners of land in India, and here they are there to collect rent on the land, clear? So they began to collect the rent. They did not collect share in the produce, clear? And in ancient medieval India, peasants were considered to be owners of land. Rulers only collected certain part of produce, clear? So in case crops damage, the damage was bared by both ruler and the peasants. But here, why will British bear the damage? Because British made it clear they are not sharing crop. They are taking rent. And if you damage the crop also, we are not worried. We need to only rent out of it. Clear? So they began to believe in Ricardo's theory of rent. They wanted to collect land revenue as rent, not share in the produce. This is the basic difference between all the rulers of ancient and medieval India and British in India. Clear? So British collected the rent. British did not collect share in the produce. Clear? And that is why all problems of revenue settlement began to take place in India. All peasant revolts began to take place in India. And peasants had to sell their lands. Why peasants began to sell their lands easily? They realized they are not the owners of the land only. What is the point of retaining the land? They began to sell the lands. Clear? And land became a commodity. That phenomenon is known as commodification of lands. In modern India, answers should be very specific, very condensed, clear? Because general content is known to everyone. If you write the same content, marks will be also average. If you want to have some better marks, content should be very condensed and very rich, clear? So it was Ricardo's theory of rent. Philosophies are clear with examples. Use facts and figures only as examples. Otherwise, conceptual clarity is much more important, clear? And then with proper introduction and conclusion. 